When it comes to living your life, it's easy to think autopilot. We often don't think too far ahead because, well, life will take care of itself. But chances are you've had situations where living that way has caused your autopilot to veer off course and sometimes even crash into some type of obstacle that comes with a great cost. To live life the way your creator wants, you need to see your birth through death through his eyes and learn what it means to live, as Casting Crown calls it, a life song. They're gonna be our guest on this episode of Backstage Pass and help cast a vision of what life can look like when you live with your focus on Jesus. So stick around, you've got yourself a Backstage Pass. Welcome to Backstage Pass, I'm Clinton Fopple. The band Casting Crowns has had an incredible influence with a generation of Christian students, not only in the music they've written and performed, but also in youth ministry that they provide both at home and on the road. I asked Melody what she's hearing from the teens on the road. I think it ranges a lot because we actually see a lot of people at different ages and um, but everything from kids dealing with abortion um, to abuse and everything I mean, it's almost unimaginable sometimes I feel like sometimes my brain's gonna explode because of all the emails we get um, but and it's hard to know what God wants you to say to them so before I answer every email I have to pray I think a lot of things that we see are uh, really high stress level with teenagers because uh, when I was a teenager, probably when you were a teenager, um, you could escape drama. You could go home for a while. You could go to your parents' house, your grandparents' house. But now it, it's, it's in your pocket, on your phone, it's on your Facebook. Uh, everywhere you go, stress goes with you. Uh, the bullies go with you. The dra drama goes with you. And um, it's really hard to get away. So you feel like you're pressed in all the time. And, and I, th I think because students are handling interpersonal relationships online around other people, you react totally different, right? So if somebody says something mean to you on Facebook, you, you have to defend yourself, not just to this person, but to your whole world, right? So everything's bigger now, I think, than it ever has been. And I, I think people sometimes, I talk to teenagers that say, you know, I wish, I wish I didn't have any of this stuff. I wish you could just make all this go away. And, uh, and one of the coolest things we have going for us is next week is camp. And, uh, and, and, and youth camp, just like these festivals like this, like Ichthus and other festivals, are where you can just sort of unplug for a while and just get away from stuff. Uh, because we have to have that sort of just flush my head a little bit here. I just got to get some things out and, and just soak some Jesus in and, and uh, see what a walk with Jesus looks like with all that. Uh, because I think a lot of times we're, we're, we're feeling like we're playing catch up. You know, we're going through all this junk and we're trying to be close to God at the same time, but it usually takes a second in the back seat. Uh, I think that's where teenagers are. Life is so fast paced. Even with our best intentions, we can often find ourselves overwhelmed in pursuing God because of the noise that surrounds us. In our busyness, we may cry out to God for help, but because of the volume of our life, we often can't hear His voice in response. So what can you do to posture yourself for this kind of reception? Well, why not log into chatlistandlove.com right now and let us help. We'll be right back with more from Casting Crowns right after this. Welcome back to the show. Before the break, we were asking Casting Crowns about what they're hearing from a generation while on the road. As a band, this group is so unique in that it's made up of people who want to demonstrate humility as they reach out to help teens. 
one of the things that I think is a goal of ours, if you follow our set and our concerts, uh, there are several things you're gonna hear me say from the stage. Probably the first thing is, I will be the biggest dork in heaven. So I try to, I try to knock down the spiritual uh, uh, barriers first because you can look on a stage and think, well, that guy's probably got it all together. So I try to knock that one down first and just say, hey, we're, we're failing daily and somehow God's loving us anyway. The second barrier I try to knock down is the talent barrier, thinking that's just somebody up on the stage is, is, uh, is better than me. So we talk about our weaknesses, we talk about our, our failures, I talk about dyslexia and ADD. Uh, I've told that story a million times, but every time I get an email you know, from somebody that, that thinks they're less than because they're not like the guy next to them. So, so I think transparency is extremely important. Uh, it sort of earns you the right to, to get into uh, deeper things. Listening to Mark talk about his own issues and struggles has helped many teens realize that they're not alone. That perfection is impossible within our humanity. But what about how teens deal with failure? I don't know if a lot of uh, students can really engage with it, but it's called the Pursuit of Holiness by a guy named uh, Jerry Bridges. And um, he uh, just, uh, there's a couple things in there that's been sticking out to me. One of them is, um, uh, it's not, your point isn't victory, it's obedience. So we feel like we gotta win the live thing when the thing is Jesus already did that. He already went through and won our lives. And now our duty is obedience. And the second one was um, just kind of a quote from Jonathan Edwards, just a preacher back in the back in the day, a long time ago. But he, he said that he was resolved um, to not give up the fight, to not let anything slack in his pursuit of a holy life, um, no matter no matter if it becomes an utter failure at it, he's still gonna do it. So I think um, when you look at Lamentations 3, I'm jumping all over the map, but when you look at Lamentations 3, it says that God's mercies are new every morning. And you look at Romans 12 and it says that you need to renew yourself daily. So I think every time we get up in the morning, we have a blank canvas, um, God's mercies are new, and you, you start that day, and before you even get out of bed, uh, proclaim and just kind of confess your de utter dependence on God and the fact that um, He's awakened us to our sin, that we, the fact that we know that we've made a mistake, that's a big step. Some people are walking around in life and they don't even know that they're a mistake. But the fact that we know that we have a mistake, that's a, that's a big deal. And uh, the fact that He's paid for that, that's another big deal. So you just need to um, walk the rest of that day with God and knowing that at some point you're going to fail. but. Um, but aiming for that, I don't want to fail once this whole day. I don't want to walk with God. Now, the comparison was um, a soldier doesn't go into battle going, I'm going to try to get hit as li little as possible. He's like, no, I don't want to get hit at all by any bullets. So that's your, that's your goal when you go through the day. And then when you fall asleep and you get up, you got to start it all over again. And eventually what happens is that through that practice and a weird word called discipline, and uh, you, uh, Paul said that I, that I, I buffet my body. I, 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 bring my body under control, under my control, and, uh, and that way I'm not mastered by it. So through all that and through just practice, and, and there are 80-year-old men that will tell you that they haven't mastered it yet, so you just gotta, you just got to stay with it because Satan wants you to believe that you are a failure, and Satan wants you to believe that, that you're just going to have to coast and just kind of get in the, in the raft and just float along. So um, the big deal is just to keep fighting. The, the righteous man falls seven times and he gets back. You're only a quitter if you don't get back up. So. You're only a quitter if you don't get back up. I love that. And once you quit once, well, it becomes a stronghold in your mind and a continual lie that Lucy, the devil, feeds you to keep you paralyzed in self-condemnation. Your past should not dictate your future. Allow a mistake, a failure, to be an education on how to improve, to grow stronger, and help others. Stick around, we'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. For many of you watching, your reality is that bands like Casting Crowns are foreign to your daily experience. When you hear talk about living boldly for Christ or leaning into your Heavenly Father, you think, Father, my dad was hardly an example of godliness. Um, I heard a really cool quote uh, one time, and it was called that God isn't the reflection of our earthly father, but he's the perfection of our earthly fathers. And sometimes, um, um, well, not every time, it's important, it's important for kids to know that um, 
God is perfect and God has their best interest in mind and God loves them no matter what. And, um, and, and they can't base their relationship on him, on what they've learned here through people. A lot of times you'll meet people who don't go to church because they had a bad experience because they've been hurt. And, uh, you know, we run into it all the time in student ministry. Uh, kids who maybe you've had a run in, uh, in at the foosball table and you say, come on, man, you know, tell me, tell me, uh, can I call your mom or can I call your dad or, you know, and, and you can't because they don't have one. They're not there. And so the, the connection there is a lot of times the kids that come into our ministry who are hurting, who are, who are acting out of that hurt are the ones who are, are missing it, who are missing that dad or even that mom in their life. And so that, that quote's always stuck with me and I like to say it, um, God isn't the reflection of our earthly fathers, but he's the perfection of our earthly fathers. Brian gives us such a great insight here. God is not the reflection of our earthly father, but instead the perfection of our earthly father. When you look for an example to live a focused, God-honoring life, if you don't have a parent who gives you that role model, it's easy to focus on a youth pastor or a youth worker. But even that takes our focus off of Christ. One thing uh, that uh, we try to do is pour into youth pastors uh, and pour into youth workers the idea of s sticking around, <laughs> uh, planting some roots, and uh, pouring into uh, the ministry instead of working up to your next one. Uh, but uh, I think, uh, to me, I've been in a church where I am, I've been there nine years, I've been a youth pastor 19, and to me youth ministry is family ministry. It's partnering with mom and dad or aunt and uncle or whoever uh, that kid's living with and pouring into the parents because uh, as youth guys you're, you're fighting a, a losing battle because you, you're teaching truth and they go home to dad who goes I don't take that stuff too seriously son and it's just kind of your legs are knocked out from under you so so for years I think as a young youth guy I sort of saw it as these 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 mean evil parents are the enemy and I've got to rescue the teenagers from them and I think some some youth pastors may think that way and what you got to grow up and understand is our struggles not against flesh and blood, so our struggles our struggles not against mom and dad, our struggles against the powers of darkness that have fooled them into the life that they're living, right? So we got to get some friendships and some relationships form with mom and dad, and understand my, my ministry is bigger than my little youth room I'm trying to fill, but uh, but it's about building disciples. We build disciples by relationships. So one of the ways we do that, we have parent dinners. We have uh, uh, father-son events. We just took a bunch of father-sons to medieval times and talked mm -hmm. about manhood and, and things like that. Like, like 22 dads and, and their sons and went through a whole course called Raising a Modern Day Knight and talked about fatherhood. And, and, and uh, so for me, uh, the more I pour into mom and dad, the more it's going to help uh, that, that boy or that girl. Uh, in the, on the other side, you've got students that don't have mom and dad or just have one or have grandparents. So they've got to be able to step into the church and see the body of Christ and the value that it can have, uh, which is one more reason for adults to you know, get out of that Sunday school class they've been soaking up for so long and start pouring into to teenagers. So, so the model is there for the body of Christ to work. It's just I think in, in our little ministries and churches we can sort of pull away and become a little segmented and try to be the end all instead of just part of the, of the discipleship process. I think it's uh, the, the most important thing is, I mean, I'm a, I'm a youth worker and a, uh, a worship leader and for our students and it's hard um, sometimes to just, um, I, I mean, uh, for several years, I would get up there and I would lead worship and no one would join in. That would just be like me just up there entertaining and just kind of doing my thing and getting off. And um, uh, then I, uh, this this past actually week in a, in a, at our youth camp um, was kind of, I, I saw the fruits of our labor and our prayer. Um, and I think that it is, uh, and I've, I, it was just really cool because one of the students um, just kind of spoke up. There was there were several nights where they just would not speak, and then uh, about uh, like the night before we left, one guy said, "You know, the guys who are here at youth camp this year are the same guys who were here at youth camp last year." And Pete and I, oh, sorry, my youth pastor and I were just kind of like, Let's "See where this goes." <laughs> and uh, one guy said, "You know, I think that's a hole in our youth group." And um, then another guy said, "You know, what if we did this?" And, and they started talking together, and they started. Uh, you know, figuring out how they could bring people in uh, to know their Jesus 
and I think that was the that was the one thing that I mean I've I've kind of I've known it you know in my life that in, in, until Jesus becomes your savior, you're living you're always constantly constantly going to live through uh, experience from experience to experience from youth pastor to youth pastor you know whatever it may be. It, um, uh, but until he becomes your Jesus, you have no you know desire or passion. Allow, you allow him to change your desires. You cha- change your passions, and then that is what you want to give people. So it doesn't. Um, and even I mean, right uh, last night they had a lock-in uh, that was totally planned by the students, and uh, I, I haven't talked to anybody just yet. I think they're all sleeping. <laughs> But uh, I'm eager to hear how it goes. As you make the decision to own your faith, you must also decide to lead your life with wise choices. Now hear me out. Jesus is your Lord if you call yourself a Christian. You belong to Him. And as He leads you, you will follow in the steps He sets forth. But it's your choice. It's your life. So stick around. More from Casting Crowns right after this. Welcome back to Backstage Pass. With the abundance that God gives us through a relationship with Him, oftentimes we take that freedom for granted. Take, for example, the balance between temptation and sin. At what point does it go from being a carrot dangled to a carrot taken? There's a line there somewhere, and often we as humans want to know where that line is so we can get right up to it, nice and close. I think one of the things that gets gets us in trouble as, as teenagers, being a teenager, <laughs> uh, actually I, I was once, but uh, I, think, I think one thing that got me in so much trouble because we were always trying to figure out where the line was, uh, you know, is, is this, how, how far is too far? Because um, if you can just show me where that is, I can set up my camp right there, you know, and, and, uh, and one thing that, that, that uh, would have been good to know is that your body doesn't have levels. There aren't moments that go into another, other moments. Uh, it's just one one go. Your body is made to go all the way. It's the only one, only thing it does. So so you you date uh, Mr. Dream Guy here in seventh eighth grade, and you're going to hold his hand. That's going to be the coolest thing in the moment when you reach over and hold his hand for the first time, and uh, it's just going to be you know music playing in the background, little baby angels rocking rocking flying around singing songs, uh, and it's going to be great for about four or five weeks, and then at the very end of your dating relationship, you're going to get a Little, little pet kiss, little, little G-rated, you know, princess kiss from that boyfriend, and you're gonna break up. And then after you break up, your heart's gonna be broken. You're never gonna love again until you meet the next person. And then when you meet that person, though, what you'll find about yourself is your body is not longing to hold hands in that special moment anymore. Your body's going, when do I get to kiss him? Right? Because your body just picks up where you left off. It just keeps going. And, and, and the sooner you start uh, getting physical with, with a, in a dating relationship, is the sooner you're going to go all the way and give yourself away and walk down the aisle with a bunch of regret, regrets. Um, I, I think the problem with, that I had when I was younger is that I didn't have blinders like this. I had blinders like this. So it's like, this, this is good now. This, this would be awesome now, right? And I didn't think where this is going. You know, so that's one of those things where you got to start asking God for wisdom, because it almost sounds, you know, like a Martian talking when you hear other people talking about it. You got to say, Lord, help me, help me start to take a long look with my life instead of a short look. Help me, help me understand that Jesus is the well that I can draw from that won't leave me, right? And 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 people are just there for me to pour into. And and I think once we start having a close friendship with Jesus, the need. For, uh, for those other relationships begins to move down in perspective. And we start understanding, um, hey, average people are getting married about 24, 25 years old. So if I'm dating when I'm 13, we got a long way to go here. And uh, so, so my encouragement to you is to, to guard your time with God, date Jesus for a while. You spend time with God. Uh, you, you spend your time in groups when you go out um, and, and just go against the flow. I mean, what statistics are telling us right now is that dating doesn't work, all right? Dating is pretty much divorce practice, if you look at it, right? So that's why over half uh, marriages, even Christian marriages, end in divorce, is because something's not working. And they're all starting off the same way. They're all starting to date when they're teenagers and it all goes there. So what would happen if we tried something different? You know, 
What would happen if we just uh, walked with God and poured ourselves into people and have friendships, but, but try to guard it there for a while? Mark takes what we've been talking about all show long and makes it real practical here. The choice to date during the teen years is often made without weighing all the consequences. How is this relationship going to change me? Will I be better at loving God with all my actions or worse? And how will I deal with the heartbreak this will cause since it will either end in breakup or marriage? And let's be honest, most people don't meet their spouse in 10th grade. Ultimately, we need to choose to live our life with Christ in control. He loves us. He wants to lead us. And well, He knows our future. I want to thank the crew from Casting Crowns for all their insights on this BSP. And thank you for watching. If we can help you live your one and only life on purpose and not by accident, hit us up in the chat at chatlistenlove.com. Be blessed. You, my friend, have just had a backstage pass.